Day 16 is underfloor heating day. So that's what you can see winding its way across the floor here. This is our underfloor heating, specifically under tile heating. There is two primary underfloor heating types that I'm aware of. There's one that goes directly under the tile, the other that goes down inside the screed bed. So this is just giving you a bit of an overview. Now, the first thing that stood out to me when I walked in here to check out the status of it is that my feet are actually sticking to the, the ground a little bit. And that's because this mesh does actually have an adhesive on it. And let me show you. So see this corner here? This, they, I think they forgot to um, push it down. So if I'm to push that down right now, you can see it actually stays bonded to the floor there. So it makes the installation a little bit easier. We've got the same thing over here, push that down. So yeah, so this was an electrician that installed this today. Most of the installs pretty simple that you're just laying it out but it can involve cutting and joining cables and whatnot. Our green cable that runs across the floor here that will actually be creating the heat is an electrical cable. And if we have a closer look at where it actually comes in here, you'll see that is these conduits right here. So these are uh, electrical conduits, PVC pipes that actually run up into the wall. They turn up and they also have a little bit of that penetration there where the cables actually run through. So if any water does try and get back through there, it will just run into a solid PVC pipe and not be able to go anywhere, so that's a good thing. But we also do wanna seal these up now that those cables actually are in place. Now we've talked about the green, but you can also see there's this little black cable here. Now, I don't know the correct terminology for it, but it's some sort of earth or something like that. So that this device here, which is a temporary device, can actually detect if there is any damage to our underfloor heating cable, the green one. If there is, there'll be some sort of loss of current or earth leakage or whatnot. This device will go off, have an alarm go off so that we can uh, be aware that that damage has happened, get it repaired now before it becomes a problem, either a just performance defect or actually a safety issue from that um, electrical damage there. So that's an interesting thing to know that I wasn't aware of. If we have a look at our central drain point here, you can see that while the cables do wind their way back and forth, you of course wanna uh, position them around anything like this. Same with our penetration over here. You can see a nice little bit of cable work there around. This is what the end point looks like. Um, just terminated quite simply there. And that's effectively it. So I would say our electrician's done quite a nice job here at installing all of this. Um, we will just have a look at the extent in our shower area because again, this is a bit abnormal. Normally it would stop outside the shower so that this water stop can remain continuous. We chose to do something else a little bit different. We'll find out if that was a good idea um, when we do some tests at the end of this. But yeah, you can see you definitely want to stop your underfloor heating before it goes under the strip drain. That's probably a little bit too much. It risks clashing with that stainless steel drain when it does go in there, um, likely tomorrow morning with the tiles. So yeah, we will be doing some water testing and whatnot to see how much of a, a risk we've introduced here by having this water stop angle removed. Um, keeping in mind, there is actually a pretty decent fall in this shower area towards this drain here. So water will be able to move across that membrane um, through our tile glue if it does get down to that point. So yeah, I think the only other important thing to notice is that this is about three millimeters thick and it will be sitting inside our tile glue layer. So you might need to have additional uh, tile glue coverage put down. Definitely don't skimp on your tile glue. It will create voids and all sorts of undesirable things where water can be trapped or even just result in hollow drumminess. So definitely make sure you get really good glue coverage if you are doing this particular style of installation and type of underfloor heating. But yeah, apart from that, we are expecting our tiles in tomorrow. So this is the first and last time that we're going to be seeing our underfloor heating. Um, don't have too much more to say about it, to be honest. So uh, I will be doing a bit of a time lapse. I'm hoping to tomorrow morning. So hopefully we can catch what the installation looks like of the tiles and the glue over the top of this underfloor heating. 
hopefully that works and we'll see you again tomorrow.